Hi, my name is John Garfield. It's uh, September 4th, 2015. It's Labor Day weekend, and I want to talk to you about working with the Father. Uh, one of the experiences every believer lives in is the desire to please our own Father. It feels like when we first get saved, uh, one of the things that happens is that we just have this desire to uh, be used, to work with, to do something with our Father. Once our identity is healed and we realize that we're being invited into his kingdom, something happens. We begin to see what he's doing and we yearn to help him do it, to do it with him. Religion warns our hearts against dead works in the name of grace, but the reality of kingdom is that the harvest is ripe and those willing to labor in the harvest are few, but growing. And that's one of the kingdom realities right now is that many people are being called into the kingdom, and there's this aspect of working with the Father going on right now. Uh, we know we're saved by grace, not works, and we often skip the next verse that explains one of the important reasons why we're saved. So listen to Ephesians 2.10. We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's a, a big deal and it doesn't really show up until uh, we enter the kingdom. Many are being invited to a place of fruitfulness right now. They are working with the Father and finding grace to multiply in their mountain. Many unsaved people are unwittingly working with their Father out of their hearts at some level and finding a relationship with Jesus later. Listen to John 4, verse 34. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field, God's building. In uh, John 14, 12 to 14. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing, work. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Where's the anointing? It's on your work. It's on your calling. It's in your mountain. Let me tell you a story. My dad, his name was Ford Garfield, uh, was born in 1913 and he was on a cattle ranch in Montana, land he grew up on. Cowboys aren't generally noted for being spiritual. But God's fingerprint was very much on my, on my dad and the way he trained me for this life. So this is one of many stories, and I hope you'll enjoy it. At seven or eight, I was a skinny little kid with a big toothy grin. I went with dad the first time to feed the bulls. It was winter in Montana with a little snow on the ground, one of those quiet days when you can hear the bulls crunch the snow with each step. Dad gave me a broom to sweep out a couple of feed troughs before he gave them grain. That this was a job that I hadn't done before, and beneath a layer of snow was a layer of ice that I wasn't getting cleaned out. So Dad took the broom and showed me how to put a little elbow grease into it and get the trough properly cleaned out. And I was pretty anxious to please him. I think all sons have a deep desire to please their father. Anyway, the bulls got fed and we put things back in the pickup, and I took the initiative to shut the tailgate on his 59 Chevy half-ton. It was a metal tailgate and a metal box uh, was on the pickup and I was not about to be delicate with this next class task. So I slammed that tailgate as hard as I could and dad was admiring his bulls when the tailgate went off like a shotgun blast on that cold clear day. And I remember he ducked and whirled around to see what the H happened and when we got home mom was interrogating him about his first trip out with his son and when she heard my dad's story of my sweeping and my tailgating, I overheard her response while pretending not to. And she said something I'll never forget. She said, well, Ford, you'd never take him with you. And the conversation ended there. But from that day on, I have had a permanent seat next to the cow dog in that Chevy pickup. And my father took me with him everywhere he went. He taught me how to work cows, pull calves, train horses, fix fence, irrigate, run machinery, shoot guns, and have fun doing it. He was a wonderful teacher who was only occasionally short on patience, as told by his colorful and then unsanctified vocabulary. 
In the second half of my teenage years, I resisted his authority on occasion, and instead of increasing his control, he simply cut me a wider swath and increased my responsibility. He was really a velvet-covered brick. I never did lose the satisfaction of doing something well to please my father, and when I left the ranch for college, I knew that I was blessed with a special dad and a special upbringing that I wouldn't trade with anyone. I was saved by that time, and I had the wisdom to honor him and thank him personally and often. And it always felt good to me, and I believe it always felt good to him as well. The experience with my own father was really just a starting place for the real thing with Father God. Here are some of the ingredients. Number one, the kingdom is fun. Doing something with the Father is a spiritual experience. The desire to do it resides in our own hearts, and we're acutely aware that what is in our heart is even more cherished in the Father's heart. It's not obedience or sacrifice, it's fun. The resistance we do encounter feels more like a privilege to overcome than an insurmountable wall. There is warfare, there is demonic affliction. When you sign up for kingdom, you get a big target on your chest, but we're more than conquerors. We feel like we're more than conquerors, and, and as a result, we have the confidence that we will prevail. When we face problems or demonic encounters or, pro or issues with people, we can say, my dad is bigger than your dad. We don't even have to say it to other people. Just knowing it is part of the power that gets us through. The second thing is that flows. The second experience is that we can somehow feel the wind of the Holy Spirit in our sails. There are divine appointments with those who can help us. Circumstances seem to align in our favor to form new opportunities. And the effect of our labor seems multiplied beyond our expectations. The third thing is that ministers. The things we put our hands to resonate with others. There's a prophetic tone in our words and deeds that others welcome and join. When we, we have a sense that it's not just us. Others are joining the same kingdom initiative because God has put something similar in their heart. A hunger to work with Jesus, build his kingdom, and bless nations. There are many people right now thirsting to work with the Father. It's a party. Third thing, it multiplies. Putting the kingdom first attracts both people and resources. There is a spiritual dimension to wealth creation and converting money into ministry in the business mountain or in any mountain for that matter. Getting someone else to pay for your dream via offerings isn't the way kingdom works. God is releasing an anointing to multiply the money that goes with the dream he put in our hearts. And that's part of the challenge. That's part of kingdom is learning how to create wealth in a right way with right motives and the right results. The last thing, those works magnify the personal experience of all these factors coming together is real. The dream, the work, the anointing, the fruit. The result is that our work has kingdom significance to our Father. <coughs> Excuse me. And becomes worship. There is a presence of God that goes with it. We can feel the Father being glorified in the process. And there's nothing sweeter to our hearts than turning work into worship in a way that blesses nations and brings glory to our Father. I want to encourage you that this, this idea of entering the kingdom, finding your mountain, and, and allowing yourself to work with your Father, to co-labor with Him, to be part of His team, to be, in Hebrews 2, Jesus said, calls us brothers. In uh, John 15, He calls us friends. We're part of God's family, and it's His it's his, he calls us his precious people. It's his desire to work through us and to, uh, to multiply the fruit of our labor. I want, you, I want to encourage you to find your mountain and your land. And uh, you'll find the significance that God has put on your life when you do. Amen. Have a great week. Keep, uh, we're going to Denver September 18th and uh, to... Uh, the Netherlands, uh, Warsaw, Poland, and Paris, France uh, from October 5th to the 20th. Um, join with me in praying for those things. We're going to release some kings and have some parties. And uh, 
I'm excited about it. Amen. Have a great week.